Say hello to my little friend. Want to make one of the very own? Stand by, I'll show you how. Ping pong cannons are not a new thing. I didn't invent them. One of the things I've noticed is that several of the builds are very complicated. Adam Savage has this wonderful build, but he's taking a piece of plastic and milling it out on a mill machine, which I don't have and I'm not sure everybody else has. So I simplify a lot of my builds, just in general, so that the average person can make them and they're as cheap as possible. With that philosophy, let me show you how I built this. So all transition section is, is a vitamin container for my kids' vitamins. And then what I did is I, I cut it down a little bit so that it would be flush. I can't show you that because I've already glued it. I use this rapid fuse glue, not getting paid by these guys. I'm using it for all the joints because I can't use regular PVC glue because I'm concerned that the joints will get, you know, extra glue on the inside and then this thing won't work. This really worked well. I tried a couple other glues, didn't work so well for the interface between this lip and the inside here. You can see where this is, you can see where that's really flush right down in here. So this little groove here is flush and then on the inside you can see that I trimmed it down a little bit to make it flush with this inside lip. So that is rock solid and that's a heck of a transition. And then I'm going to paint all of this up with the same color just to make it look a little good. And this is the safety guard. You definitely want to keep that in place. So I'm going to use a zip tie or a cable tie, red tie in the final version and I'll show it and I'll point it out to you again again. Because once again, this is an impeller blade, very dangerous. You need this safety unit here. I actually used a heat gun and flattened it out a little bit. That helped it really kind of wedge in there. Cost uh, a little over a buck, maybe a buck and a half. Okay, the rest of the build is a two inch, one and a half inch pipe, and then a one and a quarter inch, two, one here and one here, one and a quarter inch, uh, one and a half inch transition pipe. The reason why I use that is because I wanted something that fit really smooth. It's a real nice snug fit. What this is is TGT 12 CL for eight foot fluorescence. It's clear poly polycarbonate lamp guard for T12 bulbs. I wanted to use the clear pipe show the balls. So this section here the actual barrel of the cannon is 44 inches and then that allows me to have the canister section or the ammo section that goes on top. And one and a quarter inch fixtures work really well. It's important to cap off the end so that way it directs the, the balls. It's a one and a quarter inch end cap. The ammunition is just standard ping pongs. I have no favorite. I got 50 for under $10. I'll put the detailed information for these below. The rest of the stuff you can buy at uh, Home Depot Lowe's. One of the things that people have had problems with is they uh, have some reason when they, when they load it into the transition tube, it just goes in there or it doesn't come out. So the cap is important on top. And then the great thing about this polycarbonate tube is you can actually squeeze it and hold the balls in place when you load it up. What I had to do is that for this inch and a quarter transition, half inch transition, it doesn't go in there. The ball, the ball is stopped, so you actually have to grind down this little ledge, this little lip here, you can see here. Now you just use a Dremel tool. Now you can see a little bit of marks from the labels of the balls. I guess I could smooth that down a little bit, but I don't want to take it down too far because then it won't, this, this uh, polycarbonate tube 
will just pass right through. Right there, it's sandwiched. Sandwiched down there really good. One of the other things that people have trouble with is, is the flow of the balls. So I used a different tube. This is one half, one half, one half. But it's a different kind of angle here. It's not a regular T. And if you can see there, there's this little lip on the inside right here. And that just allows, it angles the balls in so they don't really backfire in the back here. They just go straight down, in, and through. So it gives them a little bit of angle. Actually, when I fired the cannon for the first time, it made such a loud sound, thump, thump, thump. I thought I had exploded the ping pong ball. But my son ran out and got it in the yard and voila, they're solid. You don't want to use beer pong balls. The beer pong balls are a little smaller and they're not as tough. Use actual ping pong balls. And this little red mark is basically where I push that down. So I'm going to tape that off and just going to glue this all together. This portion and paint it all, spray paint it red, just, just for a little bit of style. Here's an interesting thing I came up with, a pull pin. So when I walk around and I try to load it in to the system, it sits there. I was having problems where I was losing the balls as I tried to slide it into the sleeve here. Uh, this line represents where it sits flush. I put it in, I take the little rubber band protection off Turn on the motor and then pull the pin and boom, 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 boom. There they go. Just drilled the hole to, to the same size as the wire I used. I could just use a coat hanger. Put a couple loops on it. I put a rubber band on there as a retaining strap so when it walks around, it just kind of keeps it in place. Okay, so the machine gun barrel goes in here like this. And it's a snug fit, but it's just too loose. So I'm going to hit it with some rapid fuse, just a little bit, to seal that down. So here we go, four little dots of rapid fuse. Slide it in there. It's been about 30 seconds and that thing is good to go. And then you'll notice that all I did is just tape this on the end. Has a special effect, so you know where the end is. You can kind of see the balls come out that way. Painted it up to match the lower, and I put a little uh, felt pad in there and a little bit of masking tape here just to keep it a little friction because I found that the ball was sticking, the top ball would stick in there. And that kind of caps it off because if you don't have this cap here, the balls will just blow up like kind of like they did for Adam Savage. After firing this a good bit, a couple other things I wanted to point out. I did have a situation where the canister popped off, so I put a little plastic clear office tape there. You increase the friction and that seemed to work out. Remember, you pull the pin and push it down to that line and that seals this off. You don't really need to do that, but just that helps out a little bit. This is really important. You don't want to lose this piece on the bottom, so I took some cable ties or zip fasteners, two of them, and really cinch that down so it's not going anywhere. Also, on the front end, I fired it once and lost the barrel. So I actually re-glued this with a lot more substantial amount of that glue, same as what I did here, and it's been rock solid. And just as a little touch piece, I, I put in some electrical tape there, red electrical tape just to make sure it wasn't going to go anywhere. And I also cut the barrel down to 36 inches, three feet. I really think you probably could have a two foot barrel and, and be, have almost the same amount of accuracy. And if I have enough time, I'll actually try that out. This is a lot of fun. Kids will love it, adults will love it. It does go out to 75 feet and can shoot 30 ping pong balls in less than five seconds. And there you go, a simple, complete build that lends itself to a whole lot of fun. Thanks to Adam Savage for inspiring this construction. 
I'll place a link to Adam's video below. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated.